what makes MediaTek's OctaCore different from existing OctaCore platforms? Of OctaCore? Okay. Um, one of the things we've done with our 6592 OctaCore product um, is we built it with actually eight identical cores. So these are eight of the same cores. We use the ARM Cortex A7 core. So it's the little core from ARM's big little architecture. Um, so it's a really a, a small, very power efficient uh, core. Um, other implementations that have been released with OctaCore have gone for four big plus four little. Um, so it's a slightly different architecture. Um, and as well as that, um, other people's implementation of OctaCore today have really focused on running either the four big cores or the four little cores. Mm -hmm. What we've done with the 6592 is, as I said, we've put eight identical cores. We've also then built a software scheduler or a application manager that runs on top of that, that allows the use of one, two, three, four, all the way up to eight any number of cores that you want. So depending on the load, you can have more cores running or less cores running. What benefits does the OctaCore chipset bring for the customer? So I think there's multiple, there's multiple factors. I think certainly everybody is focused on the, the OctaCore. And one of, if, if you look at the, let's say, our high-end product from last year, which was our, you know, the world's first quad-core SOC. Now, less than a year later, we're introducing our OctaCore family. So there's really a couple of things. One, we go from four cores to eight cores. We also run the cores from 1.3 gigahertz. Now we offer up to two gigahertz. So when you combine the number of cores and the frequency, we obviously give people a lot more computing capability. So that can be used for multiple things. Like I said, gaming, multimedia, some advanced applications. It can be used to even speed up existing applications because the cores are faster. But beyond that, the product that we announced, the 6592, we've also enhanced a lot of other aspects of the product. So the graphics core has gone from a single or dual core graphics. Now we offer a quad core graphics engine. So the GPU performance also goes up. We've also enhanced the multimedia capability. So we've gone from you know, 13 megapixels to 16 megapixels. We add support for new video codecs. We add support for higher resolution displays. So when you put all of that together, the overall user experience will be enhanced. Video, gaming, multimedia, browsing will be faster. So it's not just about the CPU. It's about having the right balance of CPU, graphics, multimedia engines, camera engines, where we distribute the computing between the different engines depending on the, the use case to try to bring a, a richer multimedia experience to the, to the consumer. Applications and games are less for OctaCore. Do you think market will expand? I, I think what happens is in this industry is the platforms and the hardware come available and the applications tend to develop to take use of the available, the available hardware. So yes, I think um, today, you know, the range of applications that can probably take full advantage is, is a smaller percentage of the total applications. But we are working with people like Gameloft, for example. Uh, we had an announcement earlier this week where Gameloft will be optimizing some of their games, like Modern Combat 5, to take advantage <coughs> of the, our octa-core, both from the CPU and the, and the GPU. Side. And the same can happen for, for of course, other, other games. But I also think that we see a trend for these mobile devices. As, like in India, we see the larger screen devices, five, five and a half, six inches, becomes quite a popular um, segment. I think for that segment, with the larger displays, you'll see more trend towards maybe multi-window, multitasking. So there you may not need all the cores at the same time, but you may want to dedicate some cores to applications on one window, some cores to applications on another window. Um, you may also want to get into more sophisticated multitasking applications. So for example, you may want to be browsing um, and at the same time listening to music. I think from a user experience, it may be better to run the browser application on two cores or four cores, depending on how heavy it is but maybe have 
the base Android software running on another and the music running on another core. So the applications all have their own dedicated resources. They don't overlap, they don't interfere with each other. So the overall multitasking aspects will become more enhanced as, as things go forward. And I think this is going to be the natural direction for these smart mobile devices, whether it's on smartphones, tablets or, or tablets. Spike 92 also features MediaTek Clear Motion technology. What does this mean for the end customers? Okay. So Clear Motion is a name we, we give to a new technology we're introducing with the OctaCore. And this is um, a technology we bring from, so MediaTek has a, a very strong capability, a very strong business and a, a leading technology in the home entertainment space for TVs, for DVD, for connected uh, home, appliance, home devices. Clear Motion is a technology that takes video at 30 frames per second or 24 frames per second. And in hardware, in our new SOC, we interpolate that video up to 60 frames per second. We don't repeat frames, we actually generate new video frames. So you get 60 frames per second of unique frames for the video. So when that's displayed on the screen or when it's played back to the consumer, they get real 60 frames per second output. So the motion is smoother, you see less jerking in the, in the video output. Better performance often means a drain on a battery which is a major drawback in several smartphones today. How are you addressing this? It's, fair, it's a fair concern. Um, for sure, obviously, in applications that are very demanding, where you turn on all the cores, mm -hmm. of course the power consumption goes up. But again, one of the things we've done with our OctaCore is chosen deliberately to use the Cortex A7, which is a very power efficient core. So even when you turn on all eight cores, the power does not go like too crazy. Um, and again, it's, it's, it's trying to balance the performance and the power consumption of a limited battery in something like a, a smartphone. How would the launch of this OctaCore mobile platform impact the Indian handset market? So it's, it's very exciting. The, the Indian market is now the third largest market for smartphones worldwide. So after the US, after China, uh, which have, you know, over the last couple of years, the US market has seen a lot of growth in smartphones. The last two years, the China market has seen a lot of growth in smartphones. You know, both of those markets continue to be large, but maybe not growing as quickly as in the past, right? The India market has suddenly become, not suddenly, but recently become the third largest smartphone market, and we see significant growth opportunities for smartphones in India. It's, it's obviously a large market. Um, it's obviously a market that is still growing in mobile, so not just smartphones, but feature phones continue to, to grow in the market. But there's also a significant transition from feature phones to smartphones happening. And what's exciting, I think, as well, is in the Indian market, the local brands, the Indian brands, have become very strong and much stronger and take a larger share of the market. So we're very fortunate to work with a lot of partners in India who are the local brands in, in India. What's next? I mean, obviously, you are leading with a true octa-core. What's next? So what's next? Um, I think you'll see um, multiple things, right? So I think the, the market is expanding in all directions. Um, for sure, you will see MediaTek coming next year with solutions for 4G LTE. Okay. So that's going to be an important uh, thing we have, to, we have to deliver next year. You know, I think LTE has obviously become a big market in some countries, the US, for example. <coughs> but I think next year and into 2015 is probably where it will become a much more sizable segment for India, for China, for, for other big markets. It will be in India or somewhere else? Or in the US? Um, I think the, the US market is, is, is today a very premium, a, a lot of the, the market is a very premium market. Um, we are starting to ship products to customers in the US market, but it's a smaller part of our overall market today, but one we will, we will continue to focus on. I think MediaTek has always um, focused on what we would call the emerging markets, or frankly, what we like to think of as the emerging middle class um, that's coming in all over the world. And that's like a population of five, six billion people who are moving into this middle class. They want smartphones, they want tablets, they want TVs. Right? And MediaTek's whole company mission is about how do we serve that market. So 
India will be important, China will be important, Southeast Asia will be important for sure. We will also develop products that are maybe more targeted for the U.S. market, and they may be different.